Welcome back to M3's Exploded Views. Today we're going to tear down the Nerf Double Breach. Mix. Uh, the way you load it up is you, if you want to see it from this side, you have to cock it this way and open up your door. You've got your big darts and then you awkwardly place them inside of uh, the little pockets here. Don't shoot your eye out. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, you, sure you look down the go barrel. back this way, and then you shoot it. So uh, there it is. Uh, and then you just do it one more time because you have one more in there, and then you can shoot it again. It looks like a pretty satisfying cocking mechanism. Yes, it's very uh, Terminator 2-ish. You can uh, do your best Arnold impression and I'll be back. It, it locks once you cock it once. That's right. So, oh. so you can't you can't double or yeah. So I can't open this door either. Why? It feels pretty good. I mean, what do you expect from a Nerf gun? Yeah. Um, little sight here, which wiggles. Shall we tear it apart? Sure. What are we gonna? What are y'all excited about finding in here? Like fifty billion screws. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how. This one triggers loading both barrels, and then what's switching between the two. Wow, nice so did you guys oh, play with uh, Nerf guns a lot as kids? Yeah. Or more as adults? Right about equal. <laughs> um, I've definitely played with Nerf guns more as an adult, because my mom was one of those like, no guns. <laughs> uh, I, I remember doing a tantrum, you know, mm -hmm. on, the, on the floor of the grocery store or Target, whatever, because I wanted one and I didn't get one. I got a chess set though, and I'm not very good at chess. There's a lot of screws, guys. There are a lot. Well, he's taking that apart. The grip element for cocking the gun, just two plastic parts. Any kind of marking in there as to what kind of plastic it is? I... I don't see anything. Yeah, nothing on this app. You can see some mold imperfections. You can see where the ejector pins hit it. They don't care about that, right? Oh, mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah, on the inside. The outside yeah. has a nice texture, though. Oh, yeah. There's one more, of course. They actually added more texture on the bottom than the sides. Like the texture down here is different than on the side oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, there's no, there's no glass in here. You can hear it when you cut it with a knife if there's glass. Sounds kind of scritchy, but this doesn't. So there's no glass reinforcing. Oh, well, careful. <laughs> That's right. It's, 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 not, it's not primed or anything. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So that was the eject. Okay. So here's the. Like this. Hey. Placement. <laughs> Let's start with the symbol side. Here's our little sliding door. Yep. Oh, I'm thinking I off. broke it already. That's right. Uh, simple. Real mm -hmm. simple. Some pretty impressive housing. I mean, well, yeah. simple. Part. It's just a lot of engineering went into it just to make sure all these sliding yeah. components mm -hmm. and all of these features are, uh, you know, tight enough so that the dart actually takes air and flies out, but um, not so tight that it gets stuck. Right. Oh, this is, so this is the cocking mechanism. Yep. Same color. I think I can cock this while open. I think this is the, the little safety thing that because you saw that we couldn't, you, you oh, can't, yeah, like once it. you cock it, it, it prevents you oh, from yeah, cocking it. Oh yeah, this comes down and locks it, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, I just got past that. Okay. okay. Yeah, this all right, all right, yeah. Yeah, it's cocked now. Okay, now you're locked. <laughs> so okay. yeah, that, that jumped down and locked it. You can see this red plunger in here. There's only one air cylinder, yep. so that mm -hmm. has to get redirected somewhere in here to one or the other mm -hmm. barrel. Let's see if I lose a finger. <laughs> you better patent that face. Okay, so that and that unlocked this little lock. Yeah. Somehow. So here's the trigger. Obviously, it's just one piece with a little spring on the back it's for return, and it yeah. has just a ramp that presses this little. There's like a little pivot mm -hmm. piece up in here. Yeah. So you can see that. Yeah. This. This piece coming down. Little trigger, little spring stuck on there pretty well. Pretty it's good, nice. Yeah. It's a nice little detent. Yeah. All right, should we try to take out the, uh, the little with it? That was like glued in there. Oh, maybe. There, there's like a little spring retainer, like yeah, the top yeah. of the spring that had to slide in. 
trying to not destroy it permanently. Okay. Oh, nice. So here's that locking feature to prevent you from cocking it after it's already been cocked. Here's the charging handle, which is connected to the plunger. Yeah, the, the piston. Yeah. Has an O ring with a little bit of oil or grease on it to lubricate it inside this air cylinder here. You can see sort of the air passageway up in there. The gist of it though is that you're pulling something back that's loading the spring and right. then yep. popping the, the plunger through. Oh, I it right now. Yeah. It's yep. a big tube. The spring gets cocked. Oh. It's cocked. Yep. Oh God. Let's just release that if I can. So uh, we've, we've torn down <laughs> We've torn down biopsy needles in the past. They're obviously a much smaller scale, much smaller spring, um, but it's a very like similar mechanism. There's just a couple of plastic pieces that kind of hold everything together. And you pull back to load the spring and then it fires out the needle. Um, and we kind of had the same thing when we were uh, tearing them down. We were trying to load them and kind of see what it looks like when the spring's loaded. And uh, we definitely shot a needle across the lab. <laughs> Like big needle? It was a big needle. Yeah. It was a long needle. Little snaps. Yeah, some snaps. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got it undone. I don't, I don't see how to get this off of here. You take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know how they're going for it. Oh, I got it. So here's this little rocker mechanism. And you can see this, this is a little slider with the little hook that hooks on the back of the plunger. So when the plunger goes back in here, it locks in. And then when you press the trigger, here it is, it slides back, presses this up, oh, that doesn't slide, and pulls this little it slider down way. to release the- Right, and the, the spring is caught up yeah, right here. Yeah, the spring here. is caught way up here. Okay, so, I, so that's how you yeah. have your your uh, potential energy sort of. It's a pretty, I mean, it's a decent sized cylinder too. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of air in there. So you need, what, what uh, pressure is force over area. So you need more force because you got a bigger cylinder area, mm -hmm. cross-sectional area. Um, what about the design of the yeah, let's break mechanism that that's senses what dart is in what chamber? So we got to do some plastic surgery, cut it apart. Yay. It seems like it. Plastic surgery. No going back. Yeah. There's something in there and it might, I don't know where that is. I might just cut that, Wait. whatever that, that thing we want to see in there. Would we'll probably just cut it in half. Would you like some safety glasses? Sure, of course I would. Okay, safety squints on. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. So we had a little spring in there, which was. Oh, there's a, it looks like this whole mechanism is duplicated down there, uh, down. Oh, here as well. There. Yeah. So let's get a dart. Let's put it in. Let's see if it pushes this back. Go ahead. Oh, yep. Look yep. at that. So dart in, opens up the air seal. So that spring's just enough to keep it closed until you. Right. Yeah. The spring is trying to keep this this little. It's a little face seal in here. It's not an O-ring. It's just a like a little rubber washer that uh, is always pushed forward to keep that chamber closed until you put a dart in and oh, okay. it so pops that, open. That must be look. how the uh, the air gets transferred then, right? Because yep. once the dart is out, this, this closes this back closes. up and that allows air to go into this chamber. Yep, but right. I want like why, if there's two darts in here, why doesn't it try and shoot air out both cylinders at the same time? But there's a face seal on the front and the back of this little thing. So the front one makes sense. It seals off this chamber when it's empty. So the air can't go this way. It has to go out and around. But this back one, when there's a dart, <coughs> when there's a dart actually in here, it's probably just in here a little bit. But when you, when the air, when the air pressure actually comes in, it's going to force this all the way back and make a seal back here on this red ring mm. so that air can't go down to the bottom chamber. Like mm. it seals yeah. off the bottom chamber back yep. here okay. to shoot only that through the sense. top. Yeah. Let's cut the bottom open. It looks like the bottom has the same one. We'll, we'll see, which would be strange because the bottom one wouldn't need 
that secondary, secondary yeah. ring back here. More cutting. <laughs> get that spring. Did you get the spring? Uh, maybe. You only need to fire out one barrel. A flathead. Sure. Oh, oh, yeah, you get the whole, whole toolbox. The whole whole nice. toolbox. Weighs as much as I do. So close. Ooh. Okay, there it is. The spring goes in here. I mean, it looks like there's a seal, like a sealing spot, like a ridge for the bottom one as well. Oh. But I don't, I don't know why you need it. The air is going to come through. Because if this is sealed on the back side, then air is only just coming through here. Yeah, coming through here, going into okay. the inside into the of the dark. Okay. Yep. Filling the little cavity. Yep. What about uh, the barrels on oh, yeah. this half? Are there is there anything special about those? <laughs> That's a good point because something else that seemed weird that I didn't mention at the beginning was that these barrels are like the, the air chambers are way back here. And this dart is loaded in way yeah. back here. So it has to fly through this like open void inside the housing before it starts coming out. It just, it did seem a little weird, but this is how you load it. So they need to, they need to yep. create this gap. They could have put this thing right there and you just load it in right here. So maybe they recess the, this chamber way back here so that you can't put a dart in at certain times. All right, what about this piece? I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple, yeah. but it's got some nice ribbing yeah. on the inside. How does the dart fit in there? Like, is it, Pretends. is it loose? Yeah. I like that, I, zero. I, those, that ribbing seems like a total like aesthetic, yeah. like yeah. cool factor. It looks like it's rifled, Just even like though this piece. shotgun doesn't have rifling. I don't know, I think it's one piece. One piece, but, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I mean, that's, it's a long, it's a long pull. Yeah. Especially for little features like yeah. that too. Or, yeah, our little aiming sight, it's yeah. just a drop in. Even like, though it's They not, totally could have molded that in, but nope, they wanted a different color. So, but why didn't they paint it? Because they don't mind painting. They could have just painted that little top thing. If we were going to try to modify it though, oh, maybe we flip that what would be one way to do that? You'd do bigger spring. Yeah, always. Stronger spring. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's always any, kind any of sort the, the go-to yeah. uh, mod to make it stronger. The only thing I can think of is just somehow just getting this seal better so that you don't have any air escaping. What about the dart itself? Could you modify the dart? If you, like if you could put some like deployable fins, uh, fl some fletching. And so then it, like when it comes out, it like deploys and then that could make it go a lot straighter. That would be cool. You can always put a, a portable air compressor on your back <laughs> with the generator. And, yeah, and make, or just and like a scuba really bottle. Yeah. And that would, uh, that would definitely make it hurt a lot. You could just throw this part away, chop the end off, and then I think reloading would be a lot faster. Uh, Coleman, did you bring? Your... Oh yeah, no, I, I have my own perfectly modded yeah. Nerf gun. It is this, this pipe, and that is it. <laughs> and oh, it beautiful. shoots, it shoots more accurately and farther than any Nerf gun you can buy. The dart that goes in here uh, has to be the right size, mm -hmm. um, and it's. There's just tape on the end so that it's kind of a tight fit, but it's loose once the dart gets in there. Nice. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taking it back primitive style. That's right. Yeah. It, this is the not only the best, but also the cheapest Nerf gun you can buy. I mean, how, how, how often do you get that? Like the best performing, but also the cheapest? That never happens. Never. It just did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think that wraps up the, the Nerf double breech teardown. If uh, there's anything we missed or anything you have questions on, feel free to leave us a comment in uh, the comment sections below. If you liked what you saw, please uh, subscribe and give us a like. And uh, we'll see you next time on Exploded Views. Bye. Brought to you by M3. See ya.